Due to the graphic nature of the following content, it may not be suitable for all viewers. In the Sinai Desert, human traffickers have preyed on refugees. Bedouin chiefs admit they've been held in labor camps. They've told us stories of rape, torture, and even murder. But we were not prepared for the next accusation, one that seems almost impossible to believe, that refugees have literally had their organs stolen while still alive. As head of the New Generation Foundation for Human Rights, Hamdi Al-Azazi works to help refugees in Egypt. Before a few years, I heard from one Bedouins about the spare parts, body spare parts. But I can't accept in the time it is true or not true. It's not a logic for me because the, uh, uh, the body per, spare parts, it needs high technology in a special clinic, but I don't know the technology, it's uh, become, became very easy now because mobile clinic can do this job. It seems an outrageous claim, but Azazi has evidence, a series of photos he took of bodies that were found in the desert. All of them have unusual scars in the abdominal area. Azazi says he even knows where the operations are carried out. He claims corrupt doctors are in league with Bedouins involved in human trafficking. Corneas, livers and kidneys are the organs most commonly taken from the helpless refugees. The doctors uh, come to the camp inside, uh, choose four or five and sometimes ten to say okay, this one okay, this woman okay, this uh, man okay, after move them to this area. Uh, in this area, they start to make their uh, bad business. After take whatever they like, or the doctor choose it from this body, after take the body and uh, take it away to the desert. An incredible claim. So we took the photos to a forensic doctor in Cairo. Dr. Fahri Saleh is the former head of Cairo's forensic department and an expert on the illegal organ business. He says the stitches on the bodies reveal they were operated on shortly before they died. There are two kinds of scars. One is from a post-mortem autopsy and one from surgery. On all the bodies, the scars are in the same place. Good stitches. It is good stitches. Good stitches here. And this is also the area of liver and kidney. Yes, it is the, the area here. It is near the liver and near the kidney here. Kidney here mm -hmm. and liver here. So you could open here and then just take yes, it Yes, and take it. Mm -hmm. Extracting organs would likely kill a person in a matter of hours, Dr. Saleh says. They could open you up, take it out, and just let you die. The mafia doesn't care whether you live or die. When they cut you open, they would give them anesthesia, not because they are concerned for your life, but to prevent them from crying out. Illegal organ trafficking is rife in Egypt. Last year, the World Health Organization described it as a regional hub for this illicit trade. There's a new law to regulate legal organ donations, but it's unlikely to help the vulnerable and unsuspecting refugees robbed of their organs while crossing the Sinai. Dr. Fakhri Saleh says the business is hugely profitable. He tells me that the organ trade is the second most lucrative trade, only behind the weapons trade and more profitable than drug dealing and prostitution. So who was profiting from this appalling trade? Bedouin leaders we met either denied organ theft was going on or said they had heard only rumors about it. But then one tribal chief allowed us to conduct a phone interview with a Bedouin who used to be involved in smuggling African refugees. We agreed to keep his name and tribal affiliation secret. 
Producer Mohammed Fahmi and I asked him about the organ mafia. What he had to say was stunning. Many details of this account were later confirmed by another Bedouin source who refused to be interviewed. The commanding general for Egypt's police in North Sinai, who also did not want to go on camera, says his forces are aware organ trading is going on close to the border area with Israel, but that they have not identified those behind the scheme. As for the claim that doctors are in league with members of the Sawarka tribe, one of the largest in the Sinai, we were unable to find out how many doctors may have been involved in stealing organs, who they are selling them to, and for how much. Not surprising, perhaps, when the Egyptian authorities themselves have failed to make a single arrest in this deadly trade. But even those refugees who managed to escape the horrors of organ harvesting or enslavement face other deadly dangers. Mere steps away from the freedom they're so desperate to earn. <laughs> 